Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel and I'm now answering question number 7 from the Pure Mathematics P3 January 2022 International A-Level and Excel exam. And this question here is about this function, which is a modulus function. As you can see, it's got this V-shape. It says shows, figure 2 shows a sketch of part of the graph with the equation y equals f of x, where the equation of f of x is a half times 2x plus 7 minus 10. So what we've been asked to do here is to state the coordinates of the vertex of this graph, this point V, where we have the vertex of this graph. Now for, for modulus functions, it's pretty easy to find the vertex. You simply take the part that's inside the modulus sign, okay, which is this part over here, and if you equate that part to zero, it will give you the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so if you take the um, 2x plus 7, let me just move this a bit. If we take the 2x plus 7 and we equate it to 0, then that gives us 2x equals negative 7, so x equals negative 7 over 2. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. And the y-coordinate of the vertex is going to be basically whatever number is added or subtracted to the whole of that modulus function. So that's going to be just negative 10. So simply, you can just write the answer down. It says state the coordinates of the vertex. Very simple. Okay, and that's how um, you find the coordinates of the vertex. So whatever's inside the modulus function, whatever makes that equal to 0 is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And whatever's outside of that was added, added to the whole thing or subtracted from the whole thing, that's the y-coordinate of the vertex. Simple as that. Okay, you can also understand this in terms of transformations if you wish to. For example, the parent function for this, which is y equals the modulus of x, would look something like this. Okay, this is y equals the modulus of x. And what's happened is, in terms of this, what's, what this is, this is like a half times the function where you've got 2x plus 7 minus 10. So we always start when we're doing transformations with, what, with what's inside the function. So we're starting with this part here. And when, you're, when we're dealing with what's inside the function, we follow the opposite of bit mass. So we deal with the plus 7 first. So it's, it's like f x plus 7. That's like the first thing we consider, which is a translation of 7 units to the left. Okay, Because when it's inside the function, you kind of do the opposite. So this would move 7 units to the left first. So let's say it goes over there. So that's going to be, be negative 7. Negative 7. And then we deal with the multiplication part, which is like F2x, that part here. We deal with that second. So what we do, when we deal with that, we basically, when we're multiplying inside the function by a number, then we multiply the x-coordinates by the reciprocal of that number. So we multiply the x-coordinates by a half. So this minus 7 is going to be multiplied by a half. It becomes negative 7 over 2. So it ends up halfway along negative 7 over 2. So the, this, this vertex will now end up over here. And then what happens? We've dealt with what's inside the function. Then we've got what's outside the function. And the first thing that we have when it's outside the function, you deal with things in the same order of business. So I'm going to deal with the multiplication first. So it's like a half times f of x. So it means I multiply the whole function by a half. So all the y values are multiplied by a half. So they basically get, this graph gets a bit shallower. So we have a gradient of, a, of, of 1. It has a gradient of a half now. And then you got, you got this minus 10. So that's like fx minus 10 where you subtract 10 from all the y coordinates so everything drops down by 10 units so this ends up going to minus 7 over 2 and negative 10 okay so that's a very long way of doing it but just showing you how transformations fits in with our understanding of how to deal with it algebraically so algebraically all you do is you take what's inside the modulus sign and you equate that to zero that gives you the x coordinate of the modulus of the vertex and whatever numbers added or subtracted to that is the y, y coordinate. That's what they intend for you to do here. But just a little bit of a side point, maybe for your understanding of transformations as well. Now, for part B, it says solve using algebra 
the equation half times 2x plus 7 minus 10 is greater than a third x plus 1. Let me just get rid of this for now. Just something I prepared a bit earlier. Now, so basically, now what we have to do is we have to find where this function, which is drawn, is greater than the line a third x plus 1. So first of all, let's draw the line y equals a third x plus 1. That's going to cross the y-axis at 1. And it's going to also cross the x-axis at negative 3. It's going to go something like this. That will be the graph y equals a third x plus 1. Let me draw it somewhere else so I can see that. Okay, so that, that's what this graph will look like, something like that. Okay, and we want to find where y equals f of x is above this. And it's above y equals f of x is greater than or equal to a third x plus 1 from these two points as we can see. From this point and this point here. And this point here, sorry. Put it down there. Oops. And that point over there. Okay, so let's call this point A. And let's call this point, let's call this point B. Right, so to find A, to find the coordinates of A, we've got to find where this line and this curve intersect. Now, this is the line Y equals a third X plus 1. And I want to find when it's equal to Y equals. Now, this part of the curve is the positive argument of this curve. So that's where Y equals a half times 2X plus 7 minus 10. Okay, with this inside here, everything stays positive. So that's the positive argument of this 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 um, function here. So if I solve that equation, I find the coordinates of a, and this point b, I'll, I'll do the calculation here. B is where this line y equals a third x plus one is equal to the negative argument of this, which is going to be where all of this becomes negative. So it's like when you multiply by minus one. So it's a half times two x plus seven, but the ten stays as it is. All right, just multiply, change the sign of these two. So multiplying this bracket by a half will help you to do that. So if I solve these two equations, I'll find the value of A and the value of B. So to solve this equation, I'm going to multiply by 6 to get rid of the fractions. Be a bit careful when you do that. 6 times a third is 2, so it's 2x. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times a half is 3, so that's 3 times 2x plus 7. And 6 times minus 10 is negative 60. So I have 2x plus 6 equals 6x plus 21 minus 60. So 2x plus 6 is equal to 6x minus, that's going to be 40, 39. Um, so I'm going to now, um, what I'll do is I'll add 39 to both sides. So I'll have 6 plus 39 is equal to 6x minus 2x. So I have 45 is equal to 4x. Therefore, x is equal to 45 over 4. So that's that point here, 45 over 4. And for b, I solve this equation. So again, I'll multiply by um, 6 to get rid of the fraction. That gives me 2x plus 6 is equal to, that's negative 3 times 2x plus 7 minus 10. So 2x plus 6 is equal to negative 6x negative 21 minus 10. So I end up here with um, uh, minus 60, sorry. I forgot this to multiply by there. Ignore that for a second, guys. That's a minus 60. That's a minus 10 here, which becomes negative 60. Okay, minus 60. I knew there was something up there. So I end up with um, 2x plus 6 is equal to minus 6x minus 81. So now I'll bring the x's on one side. So I have 2x plus 6x, which is 8x, equals negative 87. 
Therefore, we can say x is equal to negative 87 over 8. So that's the coordinates of b, negative 87 over 8. That's the x coordinate of b. So now we can see that the graph, the modulus function is greater than the straight line that we got y equals a third x plus 1 when x is less than 87 over 8 and also when x is greater than 45 over 4 but we got to find where it's less than or equal to as it says here so we're going to have the equal sign on these as well okay so that those are the range of values of x for which the modulus function is above or greater than the straight line okay so that's a nice way of dealing with this question um, that's the answer to part B now we're going to move on to part C part C says sketch the graph with equation y equals a modulus of fx okay so if this is y equals f of x the modulus of f of x is going to be basically something which I'll just I'll just show you here and I'll draw it in the space below Basically, when you have the modulus of f of x, whatever is below the x-axis is reflected above the x-axis. So this point v is going to end up being up here somewhere. And you'll end up with your graph looking something like this. Let me just put that as a solid line. It'll look something like this. Okay, it's just symmetrical now about the x-axis, that part. So whatever's above the x-axis stays as it is. Whatever's below it, that disappears, and you're left with this. So v now becomes this point here, which this was um, minus 7 over 2, and this is now going to become positive 10. And we've got to find these two points. Okay, so we need to find the coordinates of these two points where this crosses the axis. So we have to find those as well. So let's just get the equation of the curve, which is... A half times 2x plus 7 modulus minus 10. So we know f of x is equal to a half times the modulus of 2x plus 7 minus 10. Okay, so I need to find the coordinates of these two points. Let me call it p and q. All right, so the coordinates of p and q are where this hits the x-axis. So where does this is x-axis when y equals 0 on the x-axis? So we have two points. Now one of them is when you're going to have a half times 2x plus 7 minus 10 equals 0. So you'll end up with, um, if you multiply everything by 2, you'll have 2x plus 7 minus 20 equals 0. So 2x minus 13 equals 0. So 2x equals 13, x equals 6.5. So this is the point 6.50. And for P, you're going to have when you have basically a half or minus a half times 2x plus 7 minus 10 equals 0. Again, multiplying by 2, you'll have minus 2x minus 7 minus 20 equals 0. So you have minus 27 equals 2x. So x is going to be minus 27 over 2. So x is going to be minus 13.5. Because that's going to be the point P, minus 13.5, 0. Okay, so now we can we have all the information we need to sketch the graph. So I'm going to sketch it down here. It's going to look something like this. You're going to have going to go something like this okay so you have this is y equals a modulus of f of x so this is the coordinates the coordinates of this point is 6.50 and this is minus 13.5 and 0 and this point is 7 over 2, negative 7 over 2, and positive 10. Okay, so that's the answer. It says, um, sketch the graph in accordance of the local maximum point and each local minimum point. Yeah, so there we have it. Okay, so that's the maximum, and those are the two minimum points. And there we have the answer to this question.
Okay, that's the answer to part C of question seven. And that concludes question seven. Um, other questions from this particular topic or from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions from um, the modulus function can be found in this playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. A little point here is if it said y equals f modulus of x like this, then what we would have done is we would have had basically this section here, okay, that up to here it would stop and then it, that part would be reflected in the y-axis. Okay, so it would look something like this. So it would go down to there and whatever's on the negative side would be replaced by the reflection of this. It would look something like that. So the V would move to the point here where this hits the axis. Okay, that's how it would look if it was the modulus inside the function. When it's outside the function, it's like reflects vertically. Whatever's below is reflected upwards and whatever's below disappears after it's been reflected upwards okay on the x-axis everything's always above the x-axis so when it's the whole function inside the, the whole function inside the modulus the whole thing reflects in the x-axis okay and anything below it disappears as we see here okay so that's the end of this question um thank you for watching and see you soon